Good evening and welcome to Catholicism Live, our weekly television show produced by the Pilgrim Center of Hope, a Catholic evangelization ministry in San Antonio, Texas. The Pilgrim Center of Hope brings Catholicism Live to you every week, uh, every Wednesday, bringing faith and family matters together as well as just life issues, things that are on the minds of Catholics in San Antonio. Now, whether you're a new parent or you've been a parent for a long time or you just know because you live in a family with kids, it's pretty common knowledge that raising small children is oftentimes wonderful, oftentimes full of laughs and joy and lots of fun and it's oftentimes <laughs> exhausting. There are lots of challenges, especially for new parents and raising kids and our Catholic faith ha comes with its own unique set of challenges too. Now here to help me talk about this tonight, talk about the challenges, offer tips and encouragement for families, for parents raising small children and raising them in the Catholic faith, I have, uh, I'm very blessed and, and lucky to have a guest here who has lots of experience and lots of insight in helping parents raise Catholic kids. Janet Bonin, who is the founder of Families of the Way, a ministry dedicated to helping raise Catholic kids. Thank you so much for joining us, Janet. Thank you so much, Greg. It's an honor to be here. Well, thank you. Now, you founded Families of the Way ministry. Can you tell us just at the basics, what is Families of the Way? Well, if I could, I'd love to back up just a little bit and tell you how it came into being. Sure, yeah. Um, I, my husband and I uh, were both born and raised uh, Catholic Christians. We love the Lord. We are blessed to have three children in a four-year period. Okay. Very quickly came together. Um, when my youngest son was about four years old, I felt the Lord put a really big calling in my heart to start something, to do something to help uh, couples build stronger marriages and to really focus on raising their kids as best as they possibly could. And after praying and thinking about it a lot, I started a company called Fine Tuned Families. Right. And during that beginning of that Pro of that uh, company, I went out and became a trained and certified life coach. And so for the past 15 plus years, I've had the honor of working with families to help them better focus on how they're raising their kids to the best of their abilities and raising those kids to be as well adjusted and happy and prepared to go out into the world as adults. And especially for those of us who are Christians to help them get to know and love the Lord and to bring that love of the Lord out into the world and be of service to others. About six years ago, I felt God nudging me to do more. And through prayer, through spiritual direction, I worked with a beautiful sister um, over at the Oblate Renewal Center oh, okay. for Great. a number of years, Sister Teresa O'Toole. I don't know if she's watching, but I'll say hello to her. Um, <laughs> I've, I've met Sister Teresa She's Ottoll. such she a beautiful great, person. Yeah. But anyway, through, through prayer, through spiritual direction and journaling, through talking with a number of, of my Catholic friends, both within parishes and people I just knew and admired, mm -hmm. the Families of the Way ministry was born. I started looking around, first off, before I created this, uh, to try to find a ministry specifically geared to supporting parents and families in the raising of their children that um, was offered at the parish level that would uh, minister to them in, not only in the spiritual growth of each of them, but in weaving that spirituality into their daily walks. Right. Yeah. And I looked and I found some different things offered within the Catholic Church because you know we have a lot of rich traditions and a, a diverse uh, amount of offerings, mm -hmm. but I didn't find anything exactly like this. Right. So I finally said, okay, Lord, <laughs> I will. <laughs> and that's how Families of the Way started. Wow, that's, when you said I, that you felt a call to do even more, I thought, really, <laughs> even more than, and what you are already doing that's yes. wonderful yes and you know that you know we all know that our lord calls 
people to really, you know, some people to really put themselves out there. And like we say at the Pilgrim Center of Hope, to cast the net deep into the yes. water. And yes. so uh, what would you say differentiates the families of the way ministry from the fine-tuned families? What are the major goals of the of, uh, families of the way? Well, the, the families of the way ministry really, as I, I mentioned a bit uh, in the past, but it really is to try to help parents weave their spiritual walks right. and encourage their children on their spiritual walks, but talk about what does that look like in our day-to-day -day lives. Right. Yes, we love the Lord. Yes, we go to Mass on the weekends. Yes, we participate in different sacraments. What does it look like to bring that into our homes? You know, the, the catechism teaches us that we, the family, are the domestic church on earth. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you think about it and you kind of acknowledge that at the beginning, we live in difficult times. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of things coming against the family these days. And we need to focus on, on being as strong and strengthening our families as much as possible. After all, we who are raising children are raising the future of the church too. Mm -hmm. They are not only our future priests and other Catholic uh, religious, but they are going to be our, um, our uh, politicians, our teachers, our, our police officers, all of the leaders of right. our nation. As well as you know, mothers and fathers perhaps yes, in their own way. Yes, down the line. Right. So some of the goals. Um, as parents, we know it's up to us to introduce our children to the love of Jesus Christ and to help them better understand and appreciate the beauty of our church community. Mm -hmm. We are the most important role models. And if you think about it, Greg, parents are the first and foremost role models of their children mm -hmm. in both what we choose to say and what we choose to do. Mm -hmm. Whether we like it or not, our children <laughs> are watching us. Right. Okay. We are there to help them develop social, emotional, and spiritual skills that they need for this life. We are there to be those first role models to, by the grace of God, help them to move on to heaven when they pass from this world. Beautiful, yeah. And so how do you do that? Is it, how, is it conferences or, or what is it? Well, we were talking about the Families of the Way study. I'll mention this and um, it's, it's something that I'm very, very excited about. Um, We've been in existence up at uh, St. Peter the Apostle Catholic Church in Bernie. Mm -hmm. We're in our fourth year, concluding okay. our fourth year. A few years back, um, as we were into this, I felt God nudging me to do yet more. <laughs> and so that's what I'm about to lift this up. But anyway, I created a study that's fashioned after some of the spiritual studies that we have within our wonderful Catholic community. It's called the Communicating with God and Family series. And it's got a participant handbook and a DVD and a leader's guide. And it is very much um, an interactive experience. It's seven sessions. We offer it at parishes and at Catholic schools to groups of parents. Um, we are focusing on how can we better grow closer to the Lord and how can we improve in our communication with our spouses mm. so that we can team up better in the raising of our children so that we can come together and get over some of our disagreements or, or work through issues on different ways that we want to parent our children. Right. And how do we best communicate with our children? Wow. Because if you think about it, we, in being role models for our children, in being the leaders of our families, want to be able to pass on wisdom. Right. Having the great communication skills to pass the wisdom on in a way that they can both understand and relate to is critical to really getting them to accept and understand what we're saying. Right. I'm so glad you, you, that you put it that way. I mean, it's a very holistic approach, it sounds like. Um, it's not only uh, a matter of catechesis, which is important, but it's also a matter of communication between spouses and between parents with their children. And at the same time, you know, like you were saying, weaving the spiritual life of the parents, uh, you know, inviting and encouraging and 
guiding the children to become, you know, participants in their faith. That's beautiful. So um, in the seven sessions, each, uh, each time people get together, we're getting together at the church or in a Catholic school, and there's time for fellowship, there's time for breaking of bread if people want to do that. We have some opening prayers, and then we go into watching a DVD that introduces a little bit of the concept. I present some concepts that's appropriate for that session. Mm -hmm. Then we move on to um, group discussions where the, we have people in small groups discussing whatever the uh, questions are that are in the participant handbook. Then we all come back together and, and kind of share what we've learned. And in the end, between sessions, there's um, homework, if you want to call it that, though I know some people might not <laughs> like that concept, but there's, there's some requests. Mm -hmm. If you so choose, why not go try and work with your spouse on talking through an issue that you've been stuck on for a while. Right. Try some of those new com communication skills and see how it works. What, what kind of examples can you give us? Just a little taste of, of what someone could expect from a session. Oh, from a session? Or, well, you know, uh, homework or anything. Okay, let's see. Well, each of the sessions focuses on a different area. Right. One of the sessions is particularly focused on communicating with God through uh, family prayer, through mass, through um, reading from the Bible and sharing Bible stories and things like that. One of the sessions is um, focused on communicating with your spouse and in particular there we're working on how to be more empathetic with the other person's position. Really try to understand where that person is coming from. Mm. Uh, we work on really listening, something called, a skill called active listening, which means more than waiting for the other person to pause so you can quickly respond, <laughs> it's really, really trying to understand what the other person is saying, not just what they're saying, but what they're meaning. Right. And so the best way to, to lay a good foundation of communication is to f seek first to understand and then to be understood. Oh, You've like, heard kind that of like, saying. Of course, you know, uh, St. Francis's prayer, you know. Yes. Lord, let me seek first to, to understand rather and than And then be, be understood. understood. Right. Absolutely. And I really like, I'll say it again, I really like this emphasis on creating strong bonds in the family because, you know, the church, if we are the domestic church, you know, catechesis is important, but it's, the church is not just teacher. It certainly is. But it's also, I mean, as well as magistra, it's mater, right? It's mother, mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's the family of God, right? And yes. so as family, we must create and sustain these relationships of love, uh, just as God, you know, creates and sustains relationships of love or, or a relationship of love with each of us and as well between us. So that's a great, I love this approach that you're describing of, you know, of blending the, the spiritual with, you know, the with the daily walk. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. With the daily walk. If you think about the story of Martha and Mary in mm -hmm. the Bible, that's a lot of what, what we as parents are called to do. We are called to, to do the small things, uh, the, the, the saying from, uh, blessed mother Teresa, um, it's good to do all, do all things, do small things with great love. Right, I believe yeah. that's what it, what it was that she <laughs> said. But anyway, um, uh, we, we each have to be Martha. We each have to, have to be Mary. We should strive to focus on our spiritual growth and our spiritual journey. But on the other hand, as parents, we need to make sure that the practical day-to-day -day stuff is taken care of. Of course. That we can keep a roof over our heads and food on the table and that the children are are giving a, an, an education and, uh, you know. Sure, um, yeah. Um, shifting the, the conversation just a little bit more towards uh, children, what are some of, you know, the most common questions that you've heard over the years about, you know, parents raising kids in the faith? That's a good question. I thought, I've, I've, we were talking about that a little bit earlier and I thought it came up with three main questions. One of them is how do I, as a parent, help explain what we believe in a way that my little ones can understand. So how can I not only help my children grow to know and love Jesus, but how can I explain some of the many things that are rich, 
the richness of our faith family. Right. Another question is, how do I help my children stay settled in church? Right. It's a very practical question for people <laughs> with little kids. Right, and no because, matter you where know, you are, as far as your parent on your spiritual journey and, 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 and leading your kids too, that's one that you have to deal with <laughs> every week. It's, it's very practical right. and, it, and it is a reality. Children are, when they're young, they, they are high energy, they tend to wiggle a lot and they don't know how to moderate the sound of their, the level of their voices. Mm -hmm. um, they don't understand sometimes what it means to whisper. Sometimes they may get upset and they're going to let you know really with a good set of lungs that they're yeah. not happy, uh -huh. <laughs> things like that. Right. Um, the third question, which is something we're also going to talk about, we'll talk about all of these in, in a way today, but how can I encourage my little ones and my older kids to stay engaged in the mass? How can I encourage them to really get more aware of what's going on in the church be more aware of what it really means. Right, yeah, and, and of course it's, it's important to remember there are, are different expectations for each age group. Yes. Um, and you can't even just say, okay, for kids from zero to five, you know, it's from zero to one and from one to two or maybe, you know, one to three or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, regarding the first question, you had said what well, it was, how can I help, was it more, at, if I remember right, it was kind of a general, how can I help my kids become engaged in the faith or how can I teach them more about the faith? What are maybe some examples that you could give us? Um, well, one of the things I would like to go to here in that question, have you heard the summary of, of different types of learning styles? Sure, yeah. Uh, do you mean like visual versus hearing? Exactly, okay. visual auditory and kinesthetic. So right. what you see, what you hear, and what you can touch and manipulate. All children have uh, preferences for different types of learning styles. They're going to be a little more high functioning or they're gonna to tend to want to, to be more in one type of area than the other two, mm. usually. So one of the things that we're gonna be talking about today is what are some um, combination of different ways then we, that we can help our kids um, better understand our faith. Right. And I've actually got some examples that I'm gonna share a little bit later in the show. Excellent. Uh, so, well, uh, why don't you, uh, I mean, I would love to hear those examples now if you don't mind uh, talking okay. about uh, different ways of, of teaching the kids you know, sure. the faith. Sure, sure. Well, you know what, if, if you don't mind, I sure. would love to talk about one thing, which is kind of the big oh, picture, sure. <laughs> because I, I was thinking about how we could talk about some of this, but let's start with, a, with the big picture or the macro view. Right. Okay. Um, for parents, yes, there's a lot of different things we can do to help our children better relate to the Lord and better relate to what the richness of our faith is. Um, but we, we need to kind of get in touch with what's going on in our own lives so that we can be understand why we're going to go through the effort that, that some of this will require. Right, exactly. Okay, so um, one of the de things I wanted to ask you is if you have kind of a, um, an understanding of a couple of definitions. Sure. The first one is... Faith heritage. What do you think that means? Faith heritage. Well, heritage being, you know, what we are, what's passed on to us from our, you know, you can say ancestors or our past family. So I would say, in particular, a faith heritage is the examples of our family in the past, or maybe our elders, uh, that they give to us concerning faith. Yeah. And so what we were raised up in, the journey, the spiritual journeys we were raised up in. Did you in particular maybe have a role model, someone in your family or someone close to your family who you really admired, who was spiritually rich and deep in their, in their own journeys? Uh, well, yes, actually. I, I can, of course, say my parents. They're both very deeply um, spiritual. They're great models. I know um, they've always taken their faith deeply, sincerely, 
and, and modeled their faith to me growing up. Mm -hmm. um, but if I only had to choose one, I think I would say my grandmother, uh, my dad's mother, mm -hmm. who uh, we call her Ella because it's a short abbreviation.